Hi there. Uh, I got this book. And I love basically all the examples in it. All the different corsets and stays in here. I love them. And while leafing through this and looking at how it's done and looking at the different examples, there aren't many. There are... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine stays and corsets in here. Um, and uh, I love most of them. Um, and then, as <laughs> I usually... I started out loving the 1890s. Then again, we got the 1700s. And the, and the 1600s and I'm like I can't be I can't go around making all of the clothing I gotta I gotta at least try to be a bit frugal about what I buy and what I make and I mean I'm not one of those people that like to make clothing just so that I can have them. I don't like having clothes just because I want to have clothes, if you know what I mean. Um, so, I feel like I should make in the 90s stuff because I, that's my time period. That's what I like about fashion history. Um, and then, and then this book came along, and I folded it, okay. Uh, and then this book came along, and I, I can't help it. There are two corsets in here that I really, that I really love, and it's this one. Look at that, it's so beautiful. Uh, it's an 1875 five corded and quilted corset, and that's kind of... One of the things I wanted to see if I could make a corset that wasn't boned but quilted and corded instead, and um, well, I, I really like the look of the different. I really like how this part is quilted, so it has the squareness, and this is corded, so that has the lines. And the fact that it's uh, sewn in a contrasting uh, color, then <laughs> that the thread that has sewn it is a contrasting color to the fabric, uh, and then of course the lace with the um, with the trimmings and everything, I love it. Um, and also, I love this one. But that's corded and boned. And if you could, if you can see, and it's trimmed nicely as well. Again, with the contrasting color, yellow and black. And I'm thinking maybe it's just because I love the yellow and black. Might be. Um, but of course, I don't know which one to make. And because I feel like I need to procrastinate that, I uh, decided to look at the system of this book. And um, it is, um, you make a basic female block pattern and then you plot the corsets onto that, uh, which I think it's rather neat. Um, it's kind of like in the keystone in which you uh, you basically based base you basically base a lot of the designs in that one from you base it on uh, a waist pattern that you've already made. So uh, it's kind of like that. It's this is kind of like that. So I was thinking I would draft the female basic block, you know, just to not have to um, decide on which corset to make yet. 
The only thing I do know is that I don't really like black corsets. I don't know why. I just, um, I know it feels like white, that like under things should be white. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I like to wear white shirts. Uh, and so, like, black bras and stuff has never really been a thing. Um, so, yeah, we can unpack that at a later date, I think. Um, so, let's make a thing. Oh great, I found another hole in my table. Yeah, it's what happens when you don't take care of your things, you get holes in your table. later a few days in fact uh, and I did a big boo-boo is that a word Cause that's feels like I made a weird thing happen and the first try of my female basic block pattern just wasn't very successful uh, it's weird when you're drawing an armhole and the middle overlaps when they're supposed to meet. Uh, that's just, it's not, not funny. Um, but I redid my measurements and realized what was, what went wrong and have later made this thing happen. Uh, feels I don't it feels like it looks a bit wrong and there was something weird happening with the dart but uh, it's it feels like it won't be I don't think it will be that critical checking the plotting of the no it won't be critical the the entirety of the corset is drawn underneath where the dart starts so that's it's okay it's gonna be fine um, now it says to uh, you gotta the weird thing is that I have drafted things from the keystone before and in every every top part that you make that you draw in the keystone, you do the back on your right and the front on your left and in this thing you're doing it the opposite direction, uh, it's mirrored and that's... it's weird how when you've done something a lot of times one way and then you're supposed to make it the other way, it just turns out weird or it feels weird, um, but this too shall pass. Um, so now I am going to start drafting the corset onto the block and it'll be fun. Now I've been thinking about how, let's look at the corset again, shall we? Just so we know how it looks, the original looks, it's this one. And I love this one, but like I, s I think I said it earlier, I'm not going to do it in black. I have some white silk laying around somewhere. Uh, so I will be doing this in white and I probably will floss it differently than this because, well, while some people probably want to recreate this exact corset, uh, I don't 
like I want the shape. I don't really want the uh, the look necessarily. I really like this and I like especially the idea with the lace on top with the um, ribbon. Uh, weave through it. I think I'll do that, which means that I need to get some need to get some uh, lace and some ribbon. Um, and I think that I will do the thing that this does, which is that to have the lace in the same color as the corset and then the ribbon in the same color as the flossing and to have different colors on that one. Um, so it's going to be fun. Uh, I need to figure out what colors that will be uh, or what color that will be the contrasting. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to having this kind of done. It's gonna be fun. I really think it's going to be fun. And I mean, um, the examples, the recreations sample thing in this book, they are all made in this uh, this colored cotton. Yeah, cotton or linen, I'm not entirely sure. Um, cotton or linen and, and modeled by this one person. Uh, I'm going to show off the uh, how that one looks. If I can find it, that is. Here, let me see if I can show it off. So this is the course that they're making, or this is probably how it will look like, except my body does not look like hers, um, like at all. And mine will be white probably. And what I like about how they made the examples in this is how they made the examples and then, or the recreations, and they made them like an unbleached canvas. Now I'm, I'm a painter as well as a sewist and um, you know you could do you could decide to do do it in the colors in the way that the original is or you could just do whatever and I feel like that's what they are you're, they're giving you permission to do that instead of just recreating the way that it, um, the way that it looks in the original. I really like that. And that's one of the things that I like about this book. And also, I need to learn how to do cording. So I'm going to prepare my basic block and then start plotting the uh, measurements. It's going to be fun. Okay, so this is my draft, and um, I'm not sure if you can see the pencil lines as well. Yeah, sure, you can. Um, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that this is right, that I've done everything correctly, but I'm slightly concerned about the shape of panel three. It's, um, I don't know, honestly, it's just weird. It's plain weird. That's what I'm going to say about that. It's, it doesn't look, it kind of looks a little bit like the original. Uh, and I'm guessing it's kind of my measurements fault. And, um... But yeah, we'll just have to see how this works, I guess. It's um it's kind of weird. <laughs> it feels kind of weird. And another thing is that at this point I feel like it's kind of stupid using all that time making the female block pattern, honestly, because look at this. My female block pattern lines goes here they are pretty faint but they go here and basically go here and up there and like this curve here and basically the um, pattern starts at the bust line and never go above the bust line 
basically. I have this line here, it's called the point to point line and I don't really know why, but that's okay. Uh, I'm guessing that's like, it's in the middle of the boobs. The point to point um, is the line that goes between your nipples basically. Um, and well, uh, the next step to this is to draw the bone channels. No, but seriously guys, cording is hard. And I mean, I'm not even sure if I'm doing this right. And uh, while I, when I was doing the uh, panels that are thinner, where the channels are shorter, uh, it was way easier. But now that my needle is so much smaller than the channels, or shorter than the channels, channels, I, uh, it's just getting harder because there are, I mean, unless I am able to uh, get a hold of the needle in the other end, I cannot, hang on, I cannot get the head of the needle through the starting of the channel because that requires some muscle, if you know what I mean. Um, ow. and I'm pretty sure that my table will suffer for this and I have this and my fingers suffered for this I have these extremely painful blisters on these two fingers and yesterday I went into a store a convenience store and they have these uh, no, hand sanitizer, alcohol hand san sanitizers uh, in the entrance and they want you to uh, sanitize your hands before you go in and ow. And uh, I put some rubbing alcohol, or what is it called? Hand sanitizer alcohol on my hands and I didn't think about the blisters that have uh, the, the skin is broken and there is an open sort of, I want to say a wound, uh, and openness there that, um, and putting alcohol in an open wound hurts. It hurts so bad. Don't do it. Don't do it. And also... I have a dentist appointment today. How I loathe. I don't loathe our dentist. I don't. I just loathe the feeling of, yeah, no, your teeth are bad and you should be doing everything differently. I hate that feeling of this. He's not even that arrogant. He's more like, well, you're going to have to pay me a lot. Can I just get a tiny little hallelujah? Because this is done. I'm done cording. <laughs> now, if I need to do cording on another mock-up, I just, just won't. But I am really getting better at cording. It, it's really actually quite fun when you get to it. And I... On this piece I have uh, instead of doing like a line at the time the way I've done on the others um, and while that works that works 
very well on smaller pieces. Uh, on this big piece, I felt like I was losing a lot of cord. Um, and on this piece, I felt like I've been losing less. I have to trim this. Um, and also, it feels like when, when I'm doing these loops, instead of just these loose thre 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 threads, um, it feels like I use less cord overall, um, which is a good thing because cord costs money and I'm a cheap ass. Now I get to do the fun thing, which is sewing it all together. And then when that is done, I will do some some boning. Uh, now I have made a few corsets before. Uh, I made one corset that was red and white. They were stripes and I wore it on Halloween one year on the outside of my clothes. Not doing that again. Um, it was for a, a pirate costume and I won best costume at that party. Um, now, that was... I did not deserve that. <laughs> but uh, the second course that I made, I just repurposed the busk and the boning from the first corset. Um, that corset was under a lot of stress uh, and was not made by was not made uh, out of the right materials uh, which was bad <laughs> uh, so not doing that again and when I discarded that corset the busk was like <laughs> it was formed after my boobs um, which is not what you want uh, and then I made a new corset, which is the one that I like to use, and it's on my Instagram and also here. Uh, and then I made a black corset for a uh, dark magician's dark wizard themed dinner party LARP. Um, and that I also wore outside of, on the outside of my uh, clothing and well for that character that worked uh, I will probably not be wearing that corset maybe maybe I will but it feels too long and I did not have time to do a mock-up of that and so um, but I made Court, uh, the first course that I made fits very well uh, and it was not the same pattern but the same pattern makers um, so I mean the, the black corset or as I like to call it the black wizards corsets is it's pretty it works fine um, it is not for me I find that it's hard to sit upright when wearing it <laughs> or it's hard to sit nothing else than upright and I end up quite on the edge of my seat and just you know really uh, straight posture okay so I have uh, I wouldn't say I've finished the mock-up because there are no boning in this but the thing that I <laughs> didn't really think about but should have thought about is that when you're recording uh, the thing you're recording gets shorter so that's why this has happened uh, and not that much up here and also here that has happened and I don't really know what's up with that up with this. I 
I have no idea what's up with this. I need to figure that out before I start working on the next part. It's the same over here. And um, also, let's see. I want to make sure this is better. This is better than this. I want to make sure that the cording looks like it's just continuous, but there's going to be a boning channel there, so it's not in the realm of what I am thinking hard about right now. Um, I did a few mistakes thinking up how I was going to do this mock-up, um, so that's that's a bad thing. I'm just being a bad seamstress. Here, how did that happen when when this didn't happen? I'm, it, who knows? It's. Uh, I think that I need to make the boning first, and then measure how long the boning is. Now the cording. I need to make the cording first, and then measure how long the cording is, and then cut the piece. Uh, although I'm still a bit concerned about the shape of this, um, I'm going to check out how it works. Now, I am going to put some boning channels in this and just make some holes in the this piece here. What, what do we call it? Instead of um, grommets, I'm going to just make some holes. This is a mock-up after all. Um, I am pretty pleased with a lot of this and, well, not pleased with other aspects of it, so uh, that's why we make mock-ups. Uh, I'm going to do some boning channels and I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I am lazy. So, um, I was like, I do not want to cut strips to make boning channels for a mock-up. I'm just... Mm, and I do not have, I do not have a lining in that. There is going to be a lining in the real one, but there need to be boning channels because on the picture you can see that the boning channels are sewn on outside of the, like on the outside, they are sewn on. Um, so I'm going to make that, and also the big part of the cording is going to have a bone in down the middle and so that's going to break up the uh, cording and also the seam between the two parts of uh, cording is going to have a bone so uh, the boning needs to be I've been saying boning too much it's starting to really sound dirty anyway uh, I needed some boning channels that uh, or something to use as boning channels that wouldn't take me a lot of time and then I realized I have bias tape I'm just going to sew this on to put to use for a mock-up uh, boning channels uh, I bought this sometime and I've used it recently I bought way too much to use on the bottom of a skirt and then I do not know. What did I use it for? Like, recently. I used it recently and I don't know, remember why. What did I use it for? I don't know. Maybe I was just thinking about using it. That is kind of embarrassing. Anyway. Food is coming. I am hoping to finish this mock-up um, this week so that this video will only be about the mock-up uh, and then also I forgot to buy the correct fabric. I have like what I like to call the fashion fabric is a white silk uh, brocade kind of silk and I need there to be lining and interlining uh, because the silk is way too thin to be um, to be on the outside on its own um, what else I am not sure 
I am not sure what else. What the F did I use that bias tape for? I don't even remember what I have been sewing except from this thing and that does not have any bias tape. Oh my god. My. My. God. Oh, I remember. I made some masks. Oh, that was. That was a journey. Uh, but yeah. Bias tape as boning channels. And we're going to put the bones in and try it on. Uh, the fabric is way thinner than the actual fabric will be. So the corset will get stiffer just by having the correct uh, fabric. But um, but uh, I know how that acts and also um, the fabric that I have uh, ordered uh, is it's very stiff uh, but uh, once you once you have handled it for a while, it's kind of like paper. Only paper is, you know, paper. Uh, it's stiff at the beginning and when you've crunched it up and maybe used the iron on it a few times and all those things, um, it will get softer. Um, so yeah, I have a corset, the black corset that I was talking about earlier. It is half hand sewn and half machine sewn and it's the difference is staggering because like the pieces that have been hand sewn they are way softer than the pieces that have been machine sewn because of that those exact reasons so uh just a fun little fact uh yeah okay so First of all, I was debating whether or not to actually show show this off to you guys because this does not look good. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea how to fix this thing happening with the synthetic whalebone, I believe. Um, but the fit is surprisingly well good. I actually really like it. I haven't looked at the back side yet because I don't have a mirror for that kind of thing. Um, now I <laughs> I haven't cut these off uh, where they're supposed to be cut off. I can't even tell if you can see it like this. Uh, as I am going to use the same boning um, for the actual corset, I didn't want to cut them down to size yet because well that uh, would mean that if they were wrong for the finished piece uh, I would have to recut and I don't actually have that much synthetic bling actually now I am going to try and wear this for a while um, just to see how it feels. I might cut down the the ones under my arms. Uh, now I <laughs> I ran out of this kind of bias tape uh, halfway through the second part. So I have one yellow and I have one that's this maroon color. And as I was doing it, I was like. Well, this is not pretty, but then it would be fun sometime to make a corset that, that has const contrasting color on the, um, what are these called? Boning gels. Contrasting colors for the boning gels. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? I am not too sure about the height of the corset. It just, uh, it doesn't really, I wish they, I wish it was, just a tiny bit higher um, and also but we will see I am going to try and bend these a bit inward while I'm wearing it today um, 
I do in fact like this thing. It is... Well, I have never done a corset with uh, horizontal boning before. And uh, I'm not really sure what it does. Whoop! Opening the blinds. So, I was thinking when I started this project that, or when, when I got this book, I was like, I want to make a, I want to make a corset that has more, <laughs> that has more cording and more quilting and not as many bones. <laughs> and then there are 19 bones in each side of this thing. 19. So after having worn the mock-up around the house, I decided that I want the bust line to be like one and a half centimeters higher up because, and especially on the left side, because I'm pretty asymmetrical and especially on the left side it felt like I, these babies need some more lift than that. Um, so I just, uh, I have thins, um, not exactly redrafted, but I figured out what was wrong about my third panel and I'm kind of, kind of embarrassed about what happened there. Uh, but I redrafted that and I think it'll work way better now. I'm also having second thoughts about the silk. It's a, uh, it's a curse. I, uh, if I get to think about something for a bit too long, I'll change my mind four times. But uh, as I am waiting for the fabric, the interlining and the uh, lining fabric, I guess I'm just going to wait and see what happens with my feelings for this uh, fabrics, and we'll see. Uh, I mean, just for once, I kind of, I kind of want to make. I have this weird purpley silk. Let me show you this. I have this silk. This is the. Uh, it's what is it called? It's called cross weaved, I think, for the um, where it's weaved with one color one way and the, another color the other way, which makes it, you know, shiny and. If you see it from different angles, it will have different colors. And I kind of want to make a corset out of that once I have exactly enough to make a corset. Um, but then again, I kind of like my corsets to be white because that's um, it's so much easier to uh, not see the corset underneath when you're wearing clothes on top of it. I need some caffeine. Anyways, that's it for me. We'll finish the corset when when the fabric arrives. Oh, also, I'm still working on that sign-off. How about this?